Are you a first time founder? Or maybe you're thinking about starting a business, but you don't want to make the same mistakes that everybody else makes. Whatever the case may be, stick with me until the end of this video, because I'm going to share with you five mistakes that I made as a first time founder. By the end of this video, you're going to have a few things that you can watch out for so that you can avoid making the same mistakes that I made. I'm Will, and for over five years, I led the sales, marketing, and customer success teams of a VC-backed startup that generates multi-seven figures in revenue. Before being acquired and joining that VC-backed company, I was a first-time founder navigating all things business with my then co-founder. If you're excited to learn about the five mistakes that I made as a first-time founder, hit that like button and subscribe so that you can get new videos every single week. I help take you from zero to self-starter as you grow your business, get more customers, and hone your business acumen. As usual, I'm gonna leave timestamps so that you can jump around in the video and review anything I go over. But other than that, let's go ahead and get started. The first mistake I made was building for the sake of building. A ton of times, first time founders get so caught up in the excitement of starting something that they just wanna hit the ground running without actually planning a little bit more. In my case, I didn't actually know what we were really building. I'd started a company behind the idea that college counselors that were charging parents and their kids a ton of money every single hour could potentially be undercut, but I didn't exactly know beyond the undercut portion what I was going to do with my product or service that was going to be all that different. So as a result, we spent the first couple of months of our business simply pitching our cheaper college consulting services to parents and students. There wasn't that big of a difference between our approach and the private college counselors. When you build without a clear vision of what you're going to do next, it's really difficult for you to iterate on your idea. It's also equally as challenging to stay focused and not get distracted by the next squirrel. In my particular experience, it wasn't until we had been consulting a ton of kids for several months that we realized that we had to take a step back and think about how to scale our service into a product through an online course. At that point in time, we happened to be a little lucky as well, in which it was the golden age of online courses. And so our accessible course became something that was new value in the marketplace for helping kids get into college. The second mistake I made as a first time founder was giving my co-founders too much equity without vesting early on. When I first started, I brought on one of my best friends. And at that time, I had no idea how to distribute equity. I was super young at that time. And so what I simply did was I asked my friend what he felt like was fair. We did a little bit of negotiation. And from there, we settled on a number. And from that day on, once we signed that contract, he owned X percentage of our company. Instead, what you should do is you should make sure that each of your co-founders is on a vesting schedule. What that means is that for a period of time, they are slowly incrementally earning their equity until they earn their entire stake. Typically, vesting schedules have a one-year cliff. And what that means is that your co-founder has to be with the company and actively contributing to the company for that entire first year in order for them to earn, in most cases, the first 25% of their equity stake. From that point on, every single month after that, they earn an incremental piece uh, in additional equity from what they've already accrued. So typically it's a four-year vesting schedule as opposed to simply giving your equity all at once. By having everybody on a vesting schedule, it makes sure that everybody is in it to win it in terms of building up the business. The third mistake I made as a first-time founder was not building our team fast enough. One of the biggest weaknesses of that business was that we never scaled our team beyond me and my co-founder. So as a result, we pretty much had everything fall onto our plates. So we were stuck working in our business as opposed opposed to honor business. We were smart enough at that time to get some so-called brand ambassadors that helped spread the word at local high schools, but they didn't actually help us with any of the college essay editing, the admissions prep, and other related work. Looking back, what I wish I had done was started operationalizing the things that me and my co-founder were repetitively doing so that I could bring on a team of virtual assistants to help take some of the load off. If you haven't already checked it out, I have a series on how to hire, where to hire, as well as how to manage virtual assistants that you might find helpful if you're struggling with this in your business right now. 
The biggest takeaway that I learned later on though was that once you have a working process in place, you want to document what that process is so you can begin working on the next process that needs to be put in place. Entrepreneurs often don't delegate enough, so as a result, they simply build themselves a job as opposed to a business. The fourth mistake that I made was tying a bulk of my identity to the company. At this point in time, this company was pretty much the first official big thing that I'd ever set out to do. So as a result, pretty much anything I could think about or talk about was related to the company. And what this meant was that all of the highs and lows that came with the company also came with me as a person. I don't regret investing so much time into building the products that we ultimately did because it helped thousands of students get into colleges that they didn't think they could get into, but I do regret not being able to check myself a little bit more and think about what was a more sustainable way to design my life to and still fit the company that I was building. I made the same mistake after we got acquired in that the first few years of building the new company, I was completely obsessed and absorbed as well. I think that part of it is just being an entrepreneur and having a high entrepreneurial spirit. But another part of it is making sure that you check yourself in terms of what your greatest strength is, also being sometimes your greatest weakness. For the last few years, I've had to spend a lot of time setting up my personal productivity systems to set boundaries for myself a little bit more clearly because what I realized was that after seven plus years of being on the grind, it simply just wore down on me and I wasn't truly feeling as fulfilled as I thought I was going to be when I first initially set out building these particular businesses. If you can relate with this sort of challenge, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. I think it's a challenge that a ton of entrepreneurs face, especially when you start something super young. The fifth mistake that I made as a first time founder was not asking for enough help. A common sentiment in the startup world is to be wary of taking too much advice. You don't want to be too easily swayed by all the different opinions that you might accumulate. But in my case, looking back, I was a freshman in college and I knew very little about the real business world, so to speak. Much of what I learned was things that I learned in books as opposed to things that I learned from potential mentors. I spent the bulk of my time learning entrepreneurship through books as opposed to leveraging all of the opportunities that I had in front of me. I could have reached out to the entrepreneurship program at my school or talked to some of the advisors that were available at my school that I had a ton of entrepreneurial experience. This is something that I realized was a big mistake looking back, and it was validated by the fact that I was hiring interns from my alma mater, and they were telling me all about the things that the school was investing in around the startup scene to help students get more entrepreneurial and create ecosystems of like-minded students. It's something that I really wish that I had taken a little bit more advantage of, but I didn't at that point in time. Instead, my co-founder and I went a year and a half with getting little to no outside opinion, we were just simply smart enough to listen to everything that our customers were telling us, and we got a little bit lucky in terms of the product that we built actually being meaningful to our customers. That being said though, I could have shortcut this immensely by simply surrounding myself with more like-minded people to help develop my idea. There are two big takeaways I want you to remember from this video. The first one is that having some semblance of a plan is super important for sustaining your motivation in the long term. We trudged along for several months before we had a newfound motivation to build our online courses. So having some semblance of a plan can be all it takes to allow you to stay the course and continue iterating on your idea. The second takeaway is that your company is only as strong as your team. Whenever I've had a weak team in the past, we've had weak results. And whenever I've had a strong team, we've always been able to manage it through whether or not our product or service was truly there at that time. Having a strong team in which everybody is working together and doing their respective part in achieving the mission of your organization can make a huge difference in terms of the output that you guys collectively experience. Now I wanna hear from you. Tell me in the comments below, if you're an owner or founder of a company, what's a mistake that you made as a first time founder? Or if you're thinking about starting something, what mistake are you most afraid to make? I'm sure that I can learn a thing or two from you and that others in the community would appreciate your thoughts. Also, if you find it helpful, I'm gonna to link to my virtual assistant jumpstart kit in the link in the video description below. In it, you're gonna get a ton of tips and tricks to starting to operationalize your business and bring on some additional help to take some of the load off from your day to day. 
If you found this video helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit that like button so that you can let me know. Also, by doing so, you're gonna help more people find this channel. Share this video as well with anybody that you think might benefit from learning from my five mistakes of being a first-time founder. Lastly, if you haven't already, consider subscribing to get new videos every single week. I'll teach you the real-world business skills that you didn't learn in school to take you from zero to self-starter as you grow your business, get more customers, and hone your business acumen. That's it for this time, though. I'll catch you guys next time in which I'm going to go over the five things that I've learned starting a business.